When firefighters carry two tools, they usually try to marry them together prior to climbing up a ladder. It's very important that they hold on to the bottom of the rail and not the rungs. If they're holding the rungs, nothing is touching the ladder except their feet for a half a second. Maintain this hand and slide up the ladder. Another important feature of this is separate the tools. Take the hook, place it up on a rung, put the hand underneath the rail, find a balance point of the other hand tool, and begin to slide up the ladder. A quick tip when we're dealing with the lightweight 24-foot ladder is to pre-tie the halyard. Normally you can see many fire departments have their halyard tied with a clove hitch and a safety. When a firefighter throws the ladder up to the building, he has to waste valuable seconds to untie the knot. A quick trick of the trade is to pre-tie your halyard. Simply untie the knot. And we're going to pre-tie the halyard to the bottom rung. We can make the knot slightly taut. Now when the firefighter raises the ladder, all he has to do is pull down on the halyard to extend the fly without untying the knot. Many training manuals teach when we throw a ladder to the roof that it should be three to five rungs over the roof. There's a little bit of a problem with only three rungs. First, if we have smoke coming out of the structure, we can lose visibility to the ladder only three rungs over the roof. Another point is, as a firefighter begins to exit the roof, he has to reach down for the ladder to hold on and maintain his balance. This motion can also throw his weight off the building. Having five or more rungs over the roof allows the firefighter possibly to see the ladder when he's operating here if smoke is engulfing the ladder. Second of all is it permits an easier exit. You can stand in a better balanced position and transition to the ladder to climb down. When firefighters are going to move a ladder from one window to the next, there's numerous ways to do it. Some firefighters like to try to slide the ladder. While other firefighters try to lift it up vertical and reposition it by carrying it over to the next window. A simple method to perform is to simply roll the ladder over to the next window. Remember, if we're going to slide the ladder, some problems could happen. An icy surface or vinyl siding, the ladder could run on you and slide too fast and you'll lose your footing. If we bring the ladder to the vertical position and carry it, we have to watch out for where we're walking. The ground could be uneven, we could trip and fall. Rolling it is a much better option. A few tips to remember are to be in a well-balanced position. Assume a linebacker stance and keep the ladder in front of you. If you walk this way and not pay attention, you can hit your leg. Try to maintain a well-balanced position, glance at where you're going, and roll. Sometimes the ladder wants to kick out and you'll be too far back. Stop in your roll and just bring it back to a more vertical position to assist you in the roll. Many fire departments vent windows with portable ladders. They'll use the extension ladder or a roof ladder. In this video, we're gonna use the extension ladder. What we're trying to do is place the ladder two thirds of the way up to the top of the window. By doing this is, the window may be heated from the fire inside, the glass may break easier. We're also trying to break the center sash when we throw the ladder through the window. To vent the window, simply remove the ladder off the window in the building. Get it to a vertical position. Place your foot on the foot of the ladder. Now we'll place both hands on the rail and we'll release the ladder with a little bit of energy and force. Any glass that comes down, 
you'll take your hand off the rails of the ladder so it doesn't slide down and cut you. But be in a balanced position in case we have to catch the ladder. Now the firefighter will vent the window at the portable ladder. Some firefighters are still taught to enter the window from the side. Unfortunately, it puts their head into the superheated gases and smoke escaping from the building. Not only that, there's a chance of slipping and falling as they're transitioning from the ladder to the window sill. It's normally better to place the ladder just below the window sill. A little trick I like to perform is to keep it to one side. This will make the window entry easier. Firefighter will begin climbing the ladder. And as his head begins to approach the broken window, he should start moving his body to the left. He can take his tool, sweep the floor first, and then sound it. The reason we like to sweep the floor first is we don't pound down on a victim. We're sweeping for a victim, then we check the stability of the floor. If you notice my face, I'd have a face piece on, I'm letting the building block it from the gas and the heat. Now as I make my transition, I can take this left hand and position it here. I'll climb up. I still have my face away from the building. I climb in, slide down. I'm low in the window. On a tighter window or a higher window, I may have to lift my head up and then come in. On some wider windows where I could slide back further, I can slide in and down. Remember, it's very important. Don't let go of your ladder. It's the last thing you want to do. You come in, you still maintain your ladder contact. This way, if the place lit up on you, we're in position to head first ladder slide if you were trained to escape this way. Some firefighters were taught to enter head first, stay below the heat and smoke. There's a few problems with this. When you go in, your body loses control of itself as it enters the window. There's a lot of force coming over the windowsill. If you were to hit a piece of furniture, you could end up halfway across the room. With today's lightweight construction, you're also causing an impact load. If I was going this window, sound it with my tool, I'd be fine, and all of a sudden, enter. With throwing myself over the sill, the impact load could cause a failure of the lightweight construction material. 